live from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube, covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for Splunk.com 2015. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Join my co-host Jeff Frick, who's the general manager of our CUBE business. Our next guest is Dan Pong, software engineer of Orion, formerly on Beep. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So you got a device there, so let's just get right into it, right before we get into the whole Splunk thing. You got a device that's flashing. That's your product. Describe it, give us a, Give us the, uh, the data. So Orion Onyx is a group communication device. Uh, we support instant group communication to the people that you need to be connected to in real time. So the, you basically connect this to your phone, you create a group, you add all your friends or your colleagues, or whoever you need to be in contact with into your group. And you pin this onto your shirt, you put your phone in your pocket, and you're present with whoever you're talking to in real time. And that's really important because in the, in the you know, today, people are always on their phone. They're, they might be tweeting something, and then they'll they'll look away from you, and then they'll pick up a call. And we do that all the time. We tweet while we're interviewing. Yeah, and <laughs> you you lose that eye contact, which is so important for human connection, right? And this helps us keep you present. So it's voicemail meets group me for. Not tech. voicemail. This is no. It's beyond that. It's instant streaming data. We're not recording a whole message bit, saving it somewhere, and delivering that for later, you know, reception. This is streaming data right from when you push the button. As soon as you start talking, bytes get on the wire and transfer to all of your group recipients. And they receive it on their device? Yes. And store it? They don't store it. They play it right out. Okay. Right. But then is it on all the time? So are you hearing if, if two or three of the other people in the group were having a discussion about something, are you hearing that? If they were talking, yes, we would hear that right okay. now. But uh, it's not always transmitting. You have to push to start the transmission. Okay. So it's push to talk. So. So when, when do you find that you use it most of the time? Kind of what are the applications, oh, kind of man. situations that, that it really works wonders? Yeah, for something like event, uh, events like Splunk.com, yeah. I, I ran into a bunch of vendors uh, yesterday after the, um, the keynote, and they weren't ready for everybody coming out. And so uh, I was talking to a vendor, asking him about his products, and we were really engaged, but he, he got interrupted by a phone call, so we had to pick up his call, and it was like, Hey, uh, you know, the keynote got left out early and uh, I'm, I'm here with one laptop. Can you bring one laptop to me? And then he looks back at me and we were just talking about Orion and how you can have instant group communication and that sold the idea right there. Like you, he, he lost engagement with me as a customer, me as, you know, just face-to-face -face communication. And so for coordinating events, it's a compelling uh, use case. Right. Other so, so talk about the, um, the technology behind it. So it's a hardware device, yeah. you wrote the software for the back-end service. What else did you guys write? So you got a little interaction. What's the battery like? Give us some of the speeds and feeds and of the overall end-to-end -end system. Oh, well, I mean, uh, it's, it's fairly simple, and that's the beauty of this whole thing, is it's a very simple stack. Uh, it connects, right, right now it connects to over uh, Bluetooth to your phone. Your, it uses your phone's data plan, or whatever, however it's connected to the internet. So it could be Wi-Fi, it could be a satellite phone. We have an example in our talk that we just gave, where our CEO is in, the, in a boat in the middle of the sea in Palau, and he has a satellite phone. So, and, and this is the power of inter, internet connected wearables. So if you're connected to the internet, you're connected to the Orion network. And if you're connected to the Orion network, you're connected to all your colleagues, all the people that you need to be connected with in real time. So. So you're, you're, you have this device, it's connected to your phone through Bluetooth, and then it uses the, your internet connection, goes to our backend service, and from there, we stream the data out to all the recipients. So what's the URL time. for more information, real quick? I want to get that out. Oh, it's uh, www.orionlabs.co. Okay, great, orionlabs.co. C-O, okay, yeah. great. Orionlabs.co, check it out. Um, so what's been the feedback? It's like it's very much Star Trek. Like Scotty beamed me up. I mean, it's a communicator. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, that's one of the uh, accessible kind of stereotypes that we're able to uh, yeah. to use. Is like it is very much good for concerts, Trek. live events, moving around, going biking. Like if you have, if you go biking with your friends on a long trip, and you have to have your phone in your pocket. You can't be biking. Yep and pull your phone out to text or to make a phone call. Or like when you're driving. Skiing, even, right? biking. Snowboarding. Yeah. Uh, I use it for even day-to-day -day tasks. 
um, I, I have this paradigm that I call yell to talk. If you're, we live in San Francisco, we're in this pretty small apartment, but even then, my wife could be in the kitchen doing something and I could be in another room with the kids. <laughs> and there's so many things that, times where I'm like, hey, do we have any more diapers? And she'll be like, what did you say? Like, yeah. Turn <laughs> you, off the radio. Your whole neighbor's here too. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> Welcome to our world too, I got four kids. We know what you're talking about. Yeah, so like you have this thing and you're like, oh, I can just talk in like a normal human, she can hear my voice. Right. And you're talking like, hey, where's our diapers? I don't see them. Oh, they're in. Oh, they're, they're in that cubby over there on the left. I kind of uh, cleaned them up and hit them over there. I like, also, do you configure uh, a number of different groups? Because it sounds like the hand-free, heads-up um, value is really a, a really big one. Because yes. in all the examples you've just cited, that's a pretty significant you know, kind of rank order value prop. Mm -hmm. So do you have multiple groups? So you've got your bicycle riding groups and you flick it over to group A when exactly. you're, you're doing that activity and you've got your work group, you flick it over to group B? Yep, exactly, yeah. And you know, my, my family group, my friends group, my going out drinking group, like however you want to group your friends. You, okay. There's an unlimited number of groups you can create. There's an unlimited number of people that can be in each group. You know, as and it's a full duplex communication device as well. So, so it's duplex, so it goes both ways. Yes, it goes both ways. And a lot of people ask, like, how do you manage that? Like, doesn't it get chatty and un uncoordinated? And people can do this. People can say, hey guys, can everybody just shut up for a second? <laughs> like, <laughs> Does it have the mute? Hey, John mute. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, it gets worked out by humans. We just right. connect the humans to do what they need to do. Yeah. So the, the, the heads up and the hands free is great, and, and as we were talking a little bit about it off air, we all know that, that texts and emails um, can really be a not good form of communication. I mean, there's so much nuance that can somehow get lost. There's things that can get read in um, that shouldn't get read, you know, read into a text or, or an email, so I'm sure for that function too, you know, having a direct voice connection makes a big difference. Right, the, the power of the human voice is so expressive that we lose that when we start typing that out. Just in what you just said, you had pauses, different inflections in the way you were saying things that communicated very different things that I can hear and I can understand much better than you texting and correcting your text and like, right? Right. That doesn't, that loses so much. Right. And we're able to bring all of that power of the voice back, all that all right. expressivity. So what's the Splunk angle? We're here at Splunk.conf, you gave a little talk, so what's the, uh, what's the Splunk angle? Yeah, all so, right. um, as a small startup, we're, we're really focused on making group communication easy and seamless. That's our one core mission. And so we have other business needs that we, we need. Like uh, we don't write our own uh, alerting system and that checks our health and pa pages. We use PagerDuty. I hear, like their the booth is just over there, right? And we use Splunk as data as a service. So. We use Splunk Cloud, we shove all our data up there and we're able to use all the rich like, transformation, data transformation tools, all the cool visualizations to get business value and operational intelligence right out of our data. So data as a service, microservices, um, Splunk fits right in our model of operating as a lean, uh, mean startup machine. And was Splunk part of the core when you built the company, or was it something that you guys added on after the fact? How did it? How did that kind of come about? Well, our, our CTO Greg Albrecht used to work. Uh, he was one of the like early engineers at Splunk. So okay. the storm he, piece yeah. of it, right? Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. So he already had a predisposition. Yeah, and the founders, the founder story is interesting. So you have DevOps guy Greg, Greg, mm -hmm. chef, yes. very famous provisioning. Jesse Robbins. Jesse, yes. Jesse, and Greg was at Splunk. So mm -hmm. you have those two guys. Both are volunteers for emergency services. Those guys are so badass. So, yeah. so I mean, I mean, that's pretty cool. So that's kind of seems where the DNA came from. Mm -hmm. Emergency response. Katrina right, the, was a project that Jesse was at. Did that was that inspiration for this? I've asked him. I, I think it is somewhat inspirational. Because you'll have to ask Jesse or, or Greg more about that. But I, I definitely see them bringing the Onyx to a lot of the events. Um, they used Onyx at, what was that concert? Um, in Golden Gate Park, Outside Lands, yeah. for the EMT services, uh, alongside the rest of their radio technology. Because it is encrypted, uh, it is instant voice communication, and it is connected. So, and, and you have GPS data, so you'd be able to do a lot of the tracking. You need to understand where your personnel so is. So does it play to the device? Do I have to put a Bluetooth headset in? You can put... Uh, so how do you get tech messages? If he sends you a message right now, yeah. if you're watching, 
Greg or Jesse, if you're watching, send us a message. <laughs> <laughs> right. Text uh, There's a speaker on this. So there's a, there's a mic, there's a mic jack if you need to be more discreet. Okay. Uh, and there's a speaker on, on this yeah, as Security, well. emergency personnel, easy no-brainer right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. But Just then take. leisure, I mean, I think of skiing. I always have to put my phone in the waterproof bag. Right. I got to pull it out and fumbling on the lift. With your, yeah, with your huge gloves. gloves on the right. thing, I don't want right. to drop anything. Yeah, you can just mash this button, this huge button to start yeah. talking. And people have done that, people, and it works well on the slope. And it's great for like, if you fall, if you fell or something and you're like a little stuck, maybe twisted your ankle. You don't want to wait for like your buddy to show up and start like you know laughing at you. When you're upside down in a snow drift. Right. Help right. me. <laughs> right. It, it reminds me of the, the next tell, you know, where they really promoted, you know, kind of the walkie-talkie. Yeah, the push to talk. Kind of push to talk function. Right. So our third uh, founder, Roger uh, C. Wood, is uh, was the progenitor of that whole system. So he's working with us uh, and helping us bring this, this the concept about. It's awesome to have him on the team. Yeah. And so how much money have you guys raised? I know it's Rich Levendoff's an uh, investor, uh, friend of the Cube. Um, venture capital, seed funded by the founders. How's the funding? Uh, we've been through Series A. Uh, we're in the middle of the next round right now. I can't say much about that. Okay. And you know, as a, so like a lowly software engineer, I don't get much privy to that. Though they are, they are very open to yeah. how that's all going. But right so now that's all in the process. Right how many now. people in the company right now? Right now I think we're 35. 35. So we're very small. So very DevOps, 10x developer mindset, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have a, um, just what's the code base written in? What's, tell us about this, a little bit about the software. Well, uh, so it's, uh, the back end is written mostly in Python. Though uh, when I got there we shifted the data server, I wrote it in Go. So that's now in Go, which you is like awesome. Go? We're, we're pretty much a polyglot. Yeah. Yeah, I love Go. Go is a great language for this type of stuff. You just can sling it. It's a modern language. It has all the modern kind of uh, awesomeness, right? Uh, we write our firmware in C and C++. I get to get my hands dirty with that too. Good, yeah. Yeah, and, and Ruby for all of, our, all of our chef and deployment stuff. Well, Dan, we're getting the, we're getting the, the time here. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Innovative startup. Oh, I wanted to ask one last question. Oh. There, was, there was something that someone mentioned about how to become a, a CUBE alumni? Yeah. Like, how, how do you, how do you, you, you are now it. a CUBE alumni. You're, <laughs> oh, you're, all right. in. you're in the inner circle. You, you, you uh, made the club. You're all in the right. Hopefully it wasn't too painful. <laughs> no, it was great. I wish we had more time, but they stacked the schedule on. We could spend another 15 minutes going anyways. <laughs> but uh, on the LinkedIn group, it's very exclusive. Only CUBE alumni. We're going to You'll over get 4, an invitation 000. from me, so you, that, uh, that'll be coming in your email, or awesome. maybe through the, Maybe through the device. It's the That'd who's awesome. who of Silicon Valley and tech. <laughs> Over 4,000 people we've interviewed uh, at these events. So welcome to the CUBE alumni. Awesome. All right, Dan, great to have you on. Innovations happening, love, startup action. Again, Splunk, use cases are all, 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 all over, over the, map. the place. Startups to financial services, hedge funds, banks, everyone's using Splunk. We'll be back more with more ingestion of data in our Splunk machine called the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>